Hey, I'm Andrew Connell. This video is an overview of one of the chapters in my course, Mastering the SharePoint Framework, that's available for uh, purchase on my site, Voitanos.io. This overview video is gonna give you an idea of everything that the chapter uh, covers. You can learn more by checking out the description uh, in the notes below the video. Um, if you got any questions about this chapter or about the course in general, just make sure you drop a comment uh, below in, in the uh, below the video and I'll be sure to get back to you. So with that, let me get out of the way. Enjoy the overview to this chapter. Welcome to the chapter on customizing and extending Webpack. Now, Webpack, as we covered at the beginning of this course, we did this in the part where we were setting up our environment and understanding the dev tools. Webpack is used by the SharePoint Framework team to create our bundles for us. That's gonna take all of our JavaScript files that are generated from TypeScript and put them into one big file or multiple files, depending on the configuration. We're going to see in this chapter how Webpack works in a lot more depth. So we're first gonna look at how Webpack works at its core when we don't think too much about the SharePoint framework. And then we're gonna jump into another lesson on how Webpack works when you integrate it into the SharePoint framework. There's nothing really all that special about how the SharePoint framework team has integrated a Webpack into a SharePoint framework project, except for how the configuration is done. So if you can understand how the configuration works, it'll make things a little bit easier and not feel as kind of magical when you're wanting to extend Webpack. Because there's lots of examples and samples that are out there on extending and customizing Webpack. And when you see the way that they describe it and then try and do it with the SharePoint framework, maybe a little confusing. My goal is to kind of demystify that for you so that if you see something for a standard project out there, you would know by the end of this chapter how I could leverage those customizations they tell me to make inside of my project. So that'll be a goal of ours here. Now, what are we gonna cover specifically in this chapter? I'm gonna start with, again, like I said, how Webpack works. We're gonna look at it in a lot more depth than what we looked at at the beginning of the course. And then how it works in relation to the SharePoint framework and how I can take this black box kind of feel that the configuration is set up with in the SharePoint framework and make it more white box so I can see into it and see what's going on. Then we're gonna dive into three different ways that we can control or extend or customize Webpack. The first one is going to be on how we can just, we can change the configuration of Webpack. So there's a configuration file or object that's passed into Webpack. I'm gonna show you how to see what's there and how to change it because out of the box, it's all done for us. Then I'm gonna show you how to use a concept called a loader and instrument or control your build process with Webpack. And then I'm also gonna show you how to do it using plugins, which is another way of extending and customizing Webpack. We'll look at those in a lot more depth when we get to those lessons. Now, one thing just to keep in mind, this chapter, unlike some of the other chapters in this course, or most of them, where I've created a lesson that's more of a lecture, and then I follow it up with a demo or a series of demos, I'm gonna have some demos inside of the lectures themselves. So if you start a lesson and you start seeing it going on with slides or me talking, know that there's, there's probably a demo in there with it. And the reason for that is because that it's a lot easier to explain how Webpack works by example, instead of just using slides. So I don't have a whole lot of slides for this, this chapter. I know developers would be upset about that, right? No, but we're gonna spend more time doing demo and by example here. So let's go ahead and get started. And let's first take a look at what Webpack is all about and how it works.